We have another member of the championship team. He goes by Mike Reardon, a member of the Minutemen, came off the bench for the 70 championship team. Mike, how are you? Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard, Mike. All right, great to be here. It's been a while. Yeah. So, so as as I introduced you in, you were a member of the legendary Minutemen co coming off the bench for that '70s team. What what did you feel like your role was in terms of just supporting these guys on their championship run? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I was third guard, kind of getting about 20, 25 minutes a game, coming in for Clyde and uh, Dick Barnett, and uh, so I would swing between. Uh, either the point guard or the off guard, and I would try to uh, take the best scores to keep those guys out of foul trouble. And uh, I, I knew I wasn't going to be playing 40 minutes, so I didn't have to worry about fouling out. So uh, I would just try to move the ball, play good defense, and we, we ran a lot of plays. We ran a lot of movements. Uh, we were a good passing team. So. Uh, I just try to fit in, and uh, being a native New Yorker, uh, I, myself and John Warren were the two locals. Uh, we were just uh, so thrilled to, to take a run at a championship season and then bring home a ring. That had to have been extra special, and we talked about it um, early on with Bill that uh, the Mets win, the Jets win, and then you guys win. And you being a Queens guy and a New Yorker, you must have been on cloud nine in 1970 when you guys completed the trifecta. Oh, I, I mean, it was unbelievable because the, the Knicks up to that time, uh, it, since I've been a young kid here in town, uh, were awful. Mm -hmm. And it, it, uh, uh, it putting things together and on the rise and uh, getting good draft picks with Eddie Donovan and Red Holzman, putting things together, uh, we could see which way it was going. And when we made that trade uh, for Dave DeBuscher. Uh, it it kind of solidified three positions. Uh, uh, Willis went back into the hole. Dave was the power forward, and Clyde took over running the club. So uh, all the chemistry was, was solid right after that point. And we had a good playoff run. We lost to the Celtics, but we knew we were all coming back. And uh, it, uh, it was just a Cinderella season as far as uh, we, we had – uh, a, a good win streak there. I think we won 16 or 17 uh, in a row that year. And uh, so uh, it, it, it was basically the highlight of, uh, of, of anything I had ever done in basketball uh, during that time and since because we, we weren't concerned. No one was concerned with individual honors or stats. Uh, we were just uh, zeroed in on uh, winning a championship. And there's, there's no feeling like it. What was it like going up against Clyde and Dr. Barnett in practice? Did, did you feel like that kind of prepared you for some of the other, you know, legends of the game when you had to guard them? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, those guys were, were, were two of the best guards in the league, great guard tandem. And uh, uh, our practices got pretty heated, too, because we, uh, we were – the guys on the uh, Minutemen, we tried to push the, uh, the starters severely. And uh, sometimes, you know, they weren't into it. Sometimes they were trying to take it. But w when we got into it, started talking trash to them and, and knocking them down, uh, <laughs> they, they knew uh, that, hey, we were going to finish up on a roll here. So uh, it, it, uh, I think it prepared us for games. And uh, we had a very predictable routine as far as substitutions goes, other than uh, people getting in foul trouble or injuries. But uh, uh, Kazi... Uh, Dave Stallworth, uh, myself, Nate Bowman, and then we, we had a fifth uh, for Bill Hoskett or Johnny Warren. And uh, the practices were pretty close. Uh, and uh, we, think, we think that has got a lot to do with preparing a team uh, for the last four to six minutes of a game. All right, Mike, spill the beans. How many fights went on in these practices? <laughs> uh, were the punches thrown, anything No, like no, no. We, we, <laughs> no TMZ there? <laughs> no, don't, nothing like that. Just just uh, some bad looks at times yeah. and said, what was that? And uh, we, we all were on the same page, but uh, it, ne it never elevated to that. It, it, ju it just came down to words. No one swung on each other. And uh, afterwards, it was all buried because... We were like a family. I mean, uh, you guys got, had family fights, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. And then uh, next thing you know, you're eating dinner with yeah, everybody, right, right? Right, right, Do you ever joke with Earl? that Because you were part of the tray that got Earl here. So shouldn't you get the second second ring too? Don't you get another I, ring? I just reminded him of that. <laughs> okay. I, I, I said, you know, hey, Earl, uh, you wouldn't have got that second ring without me. Yeah. And uh, But then I also uh, said something to him uh, kidding around. I, he said... Uh, 
uh, oh, you're still living down in Maryland? And I said, yeah. And I told him where I was. I said, hey, uh, Earl, you know, you got more fans down in Maryland than you do in New York. <laughs> <laughs> in other words, he, he was the man down yeah, there. Yeah, right? absolutely. Where, absolutely. Where here, he, he was another star. Right, mm-hmm. right. But he, he wasn't the man here. Right. Right? So uh, he, he nodded and said, you got that right. <laughs> That's funny. Well, 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 Mike, we're getting the cue here. Uh, all right. It was an honor to speak to you. Thank, thank you very much yeah, for joining us. Nice talking to you guys. All right. Yeah, appreciate yeah. it. Right. Absolutely. Enjoy the lunch. That's Mike Reardon, a member of the Minutemen, the championship Knicks. Queens a, native, baby. Queens, Queens native. in the house. Queens, Let's stand go. Up. Stand up, Queens. Queens. Leave it in the chat, man. Mike Reardon. Thanks again, Mike. <laughs>